you know the saying, build it and they will come. Well, we started out, uh, when I first moved here, I was told by the park that we had six to 7,000 people. My name is Diana Shabros, and I also have a Tibetan name and an Indian name. Where am I located? I'm in Valmarie, Saskatchewan. And I moved here about 10 years ago, after many years in Regina. I felt that I needed a change. Uh, there were a lot of things going on. A lot of people roll their eyes when I say I'm guided by dreams, but it's true. I have some pretty significant dreams at times and they provide me with a lot of support. So I was dreaming a lot of the Southwest and um, had been looking at houses elsewhere, but kept being drawn to the Southwest. My grandparents on my mom's side uh, are from the Big Muddy area, uh, ranching and farming. And so that was already in my blood, having gone for family vacations um, year after year. We'd looked, my partner and I at the time had looked at a lot of locations across the southern part of the province. Couldn't find a house that met our needs, decided um, that we were going to land in East End, actually. And then that didn't work out either for house or for a couple of reasons. Uh, met beautiful people there and did some fine project work. But at the point where I really needed to locate a place to live, um, he recommended Valmarie and I said, well, it's kind of small, but there is a national park, so maybe I can do some B&B &B work. I have a long history with yoga. It's a beautiful practice. I recommend it to anyone. Yoga is for everyone. I um, broke my spine when I was nine and um, quite quickly after that I happened upon, I think it was Kareen's yoga, she had a television show and I started practicing yoga. Uh, it, it's what has allowed me to remain strong physically and it's also allowed me to adopt a lifestyle that works for me. I began when I was a child making art, so nobody had to teach me that. I think a lot of people have it beaten out of them at an early age, unfortunately. And so one of the things that I've uh, developed over time is um, a practice in intuitive painting. I am an artist who shows and exhibits, and I, I produce canvas work, um, actually some really large pieces sometimes. But at one point in my life, I was very blocked and um, wasn't able to make work. And I couldn't seem to clear the time to make work. That's the difficult part for artists, is the world is so busy. We're all trying to make our way and so to be able to find that time, that space, that, that opportunity to create work, to be a creative person, it's tough. I think at that point in my life where I realized that I'm really blocked, I started sifting through my bookshelf and a book fell off the shelf. And it was something I'd purchased years prior, but wasn't ready to actually read. And at that point, that night, I was ready. And it was a book by uh, my painting mentor, now one of my painting mentors, um, Aviva Gold. And she was delivering retreats on intuitive painting. And I went to a week-long retreat in Esalen with her. Um, that was an amazing experience. Broke my ankle the first night and no health care there, which surprised me, but I, <laughs> I ended up sticking it out. I needed to, I really needed to be there. And that painting, uh, which was produced um, during that week long retreat, was actually the impetus for this kind of canvas work. 
So it was extremely important. It broke, it broke my, my um, blockage. So anyway, um, I decided to share that way of engaging with the world with other people and developed my own retreats and workshops. And so I facilitate those here in the studio. People um, are able to sink into it and move through some things that they wouldn't necessarily be able to move through without an expressive outlet. So yeah, it's a beautiful process. It's very profound. Yes, Joseph's an important part of my life. Um, he's an artist as well. He's an emerging elder, uh, an actor, a musician, a uh, performing artist. Um, he does many things. And so he, uh, having come into my life, gosh, about 14 years ago, introduced me to a whole worldview that was very different. I had already been studying with elders um, of various backgrounds. And so the Nihiao worldview was an additional one and one that I've spent a lot more time learning through Joseph and my other contacts um, since then. There are, <clears throat> there's so much need in the world to understand our history um, all over the world, actually, because indigenous populations, without, without leaping into a conversation that I am not really articulate about, uh, but I have my own feelings about, I'll just say that it's a learning curve that we all need to take on. The work that we do together and that I support him in, um, often we'll refer to it as bridging work. Uh, it, it certainly helps and supports people to come to a better understanding of their relationship with their neighbors and with themselves, actually. We learn a lot through investigating those kinds of questions and, um, and that worldview. When I moved here um, over a decade ago, I realized I needed a way to make income. And because I had a bit of experience renting to people, um, I realized on a national park, um, on land near a national park, that's probably going to be a good way to make some income. You know the saying, build it and they will come? Well, we started out, uh, when I first moved here, I was told by the park that we had six to 7,000 people coming to Grassland National Park per year. That was annual. Very low number compared to a lot of other national parks, but it's continued to be become a place where people just wanna go explore it's a different experience than a lot of other parks. It's a different landscape. It's extremely fragile. Um, it's one of the most fragile landscapes in the world, actually. Um, it's also a place where it's pretty rugged. Um, you will come across prickly plants and the occasional snake and, you know, so you have to be okay with that. But it's, it's, it's an ecosystem that's really interesting and the vegetation and the species at risk, and there are so many, um, are incredibly interesting and um, wonderful to photograph. So, yeah, and the night sky, what can I say? It's just breathtaking. Certainly, they can find me on our website, skystory.ca. Um, I'm also found on Facebook, and I have a pro professional page as well as my personal page. Instagram, I'm there now, and um, and Val Marie, just wandering around, getting groceries, and maybe out for a hike. Hmm, that's a tough one. I would say um, leave yourself open to uh, being curious. It's never too late to 
learn how to express oneself through creative means. It's never too late. I don't care how old you are. And it's never too late to start practicing yoga. Yoga is a life support for everyone. And you don't need to be a body type. You don't need to have your special pants. You don't need to um, move in a certain way. There are all kinds of physical forms of yoga, um, mental, emotional supports in yoga. Um, it's mind training is what it is. It trains us to be able to move through life much more easily. And gosh, we need that in this world. Thank you.